Markets reacted negatively this morning to S&P issuing a negative outlook for U.S. long-term debt. But our next guest says the report wasn't the cause of the big sell-off. Joining us now is Mark Dow, Portfolio Manager at Faro Management, a New York-based hedge fund. He is also a former economist for the Treasury Department and the International Monetary Fund. So, uh, Mark, thank you so much for coming in Thanks, on man. such short Thanks notice. Let me, me. let me ask you first of all, obviously the timing of S&P's announcement was shocking, but you know, the, the context of it wasn't really, and, and you say it wasn't really the reason for the sell-off we saw in equities. Yeah, it was the fuel on the fire. I mean, already markets were selling off in Asia in Asia time. It started really from, from the get-go there. And it might have been concerns about Europe that mounted over the weekend or the rate the reserve requirement being increased yet again in China. That set things off. And when you have uh, when you have a market that's had a run that, that we've had since the, the, the low after the post-Japan low, uh, and, and you see a down market and a bad news flow comes out, what do guys do? They hit the bid and then they ask questions later. So I think this is really few, more fuel on the fire than the initial spark. So what, shrug off what S&P did? I mean, some folks come out, came on and said, you know, we didn't, they missed the financial crisis. Why are we paying any attention to what S&P has to say right now? Yeah, well, there are two things I would say. First of all, look at the, everyone focuses on stocks and most of the people that come on the program are, are stock guys. Uh, Treasuries end of the day higher mm -hmm. uh, than where they were when dollar the announcement came out. The, and the dollar was up already. And, and that's and important, for, then where they were when the announcement yes. came out. Right, so right. they dropped and then they came back to a higher, higher point. So that means something else is going on in stocks. I don't want to dismiss what S&P is doing because this issue is extremely serious for the United States. The reasons to believe that the incentives are better aligned now than they have been in a while to get this done, and we can come back to that. But it's a, it, it is a serious issue. And, and as, as you alluded to, S&P needs to start being more proactive and less reactive. And this is a perfect time to do it, because they essentially said, if things don't get done in the next couple of years, we have a real problem. And we kind of knew that. But they've laid down a marker saying, mm -hmm. okay, guys, we've got, if, if this doesn't happen, we have free reign to, to downgrade you. And that's what they should be doing. Are the incentives, though, really better for Washington to take care of this problem now because we, you know, S&P at least points out uh, under the president's plan by 2016, we'll still have $21 trillion in debt. Under Paul Ryan's plan by 2016, we'll still have $19.5 trillion in debt. There's not a huge discrepancy there. The election's coming up. Voters want money. 49% of filers don't pay taxes. I mean, what are the incentives for Washington to really well, do I'll, something I'll tell you what's gotten this? better. First of all, the plans on the table don't mean a lot. What, what, what's much more important is that guys have started to get specific. But this is how the incentives have changed. And it started a few months ago. When it it became clear that the economy was starting to get a little bit of traction, it took the second issue off the table for the Republicans to go after Obama in the presidential election. The first issue was Iraq, Afghanistan, and these issues. Obviously, they could only attack the Democrats from the right, and they don't dare do that because the American public isn't there. Growth was the second issue, and now we're starting to get a little bit of traction with jobs and with growth. So the better issue, and that's actually the natural issue for Republicans to attack Democrats on, is the fiscal. And, and so they said, this is what the next election is going to be about. Once they understood that, Obama said, okay, I have to prove to, to, to the American public that I'm more fiscally responsible than wh whoever they put against me in the next elections. And that's where they stand right now. So the next elections are going to be contested on the basis of who can be more responsible. Well, well, and that means, when we get 18 months of kind of the Ross Perot period, where we're being prepared for some de greater degree of sacrifice than we've been willing to accept up to now. And then once we get there, whoever gets elected is going to have a mandate to do something. Will they solve all the problems? No, but they're going to take us further than I think most people suggest, or, or than, than most people are factoring in right now. Is the president uh, proving that he's fiscally responsible? Because we have seen his plan. Uh, he stretches 10 years out to 12 years and still cuts less than Paul Ryan. And it's interesting the timing because he's now flying west, right, to really sell this across the country, yeah. right, as this warning comes out. This is the case he's going to have to make, all right? So whoever whoever makes that case better to the American people is going to get elected. Now, he wants to do two things. So if you stand back and you're a Republican strategist, you say, go after. Obama on the budget, that's where we can get them. And if you're Obama, you say, okay, I'm going to, make, I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to say, please, after you, you first. Get the other guy to get as specific as possible, because he knows that the electorate doesn't like specifics when it comes to sacrifice. We like specifics when it comes to tax cuts. We don't like specifics when it comes to sacrifice. The second thing uh, he, he's, he's going to want to do is say, the, the American people, need, with the budget needs surgery. Do you want the butcher to do it, or do you want the surgeon to do it? Mm -hmm. I've got them. They're going to cut bone, and they're going to cut, and they're going to cut, and they're going to cut muscle. Uh, I'll be much smarter about it. That's that's the case he's going to try and make, and we'll see how, how well he does, does over the next 18 months. we got to run. Mark, thank you so much, as always. Mark Dow joining us here.